Last time on Notes from the Field. Last night, we went into the plane with biologist Tim Bean to monitor the endangered giant kangaroo rat. We caught six adorable individuals and learned a lot about the state of their population in the face of California's drought. Today, we're checking up on the highly endangered blunt-nosed leopard lizard which you might remember for its taste for biologists. The blunt-nosed leopard lizard can leap more than 23 inches to escape predators and catch prey. It feeds primarily on insects like grasshoppers, crickets, and moths, and sometimes on other smaller lizards if it's lucky. The sun is back up over the plane and we're tracking the blunt-nosed leopard lizard with an expert. I'm Mike Westfall, wildlife biology program lead for the Bureau of Land Management. The lizards Mike is looking for have GPS collars so we can track them using an antenna array that lets us know when a lizard is near. That's the beat for the lizard. Once we've identified the lizard, Mike catches it using a specialized lasso. He got it! Mike and Lindsay Perea, a field technician at Cal Poly's Physiological Ecology of Reptiles Lab, safely remove the lasso from the lizard's neck and prepare him for monitoring. Mike identifies it as a male and you can see its GPS tracking collar there. The monitoring process is similar to what Tim did for the giant kangaroo rats last night. First, Mike measures the lizard. Okay, so. We're going to measure from the tip of the snout to the vent, cloaca. And I'm going to call this a little shy of, we'll call that 109. We'll call that 109 snout vent length. He checks it for parasites. And we will check the body condition. So this one has a little bit of gunk on its chin from, so it's been eating. That's bug juice from a grasshopper, something else that it chomped up. And I'm gonna look for ticks and mites. Ticks might be up around the ear holes. And I've only found ticks occasionally. I am seeing a couple of mites on this lizard, so but not very many. So if you look in the, the ear hole here, uh, there's a couple of little orange dots. I don't know if you can, the camera can see that. I, I don't want him to bite, but let's see if there's, that's the only sighties I got them on, so. And he weighs the lizard. So this animal is a bag G, about six, it's used about six grams. So I'm going to call this about 50 grams. So again, the, the trick, to, of course, he's going to bite the bag. He also had a chance to tell us about his work to restore the species numbers. Unlike the giant kangaroo rat, blunt-nosed leopard lizards are so endangered that Mike's team needs to raise them in captivity to gain insights about the threats they face. What we're going to learn is by having a ton of lizards we raise in captivity and we're going to put them on land and we're going to see what happens to them. And hopefully we'll learn from that. If they make it, ironically if they make it, we're not going to learn that much. If they don't make it, we learn why they didn't make it. And since Mike is one of the few people in the world allowed to handle the blunt-nosed leopard lizard, I had the amazing luck of knowing the right researchers. My presence, you're allowed to, to handle these lizards. So we're going to have a, a lizard fest. So I'm going to kind of stand away a little bit. We said goodbye to our lizard but he left Mike something to remember him. That's a pretty good, uh, good chomp. Good chomper. Everything in the Carrizo Plain is connected. From the species we met today to the native shrubs and grasses that go on for miles. This landscape is the largest remnant of a system that once spanned the length of the Central Valley. However, as habitats shrink, so do the populations of the species that depend on them. California is facing a severe drought, and the evidence is written on the plain in the form of dry vegetation and less food for the ecosystem's endangered species. But this landscape is resilient, and it's an amazing example of what's possible when we return agricultural land to its wild state. Now, in the San Joaquin Valley, around 500,000 acres of farmland will have to come out of agricultural production because of the drought and new laws designed to save groundwater. Though this will be a hard transition, it could be an opportunity to reclaim land for species recovery. If we restored just 50,000 to 60,000 of those acres for San Joaquin species, like the ones we met today, 
we could see the largest recovery of threatened and endangered species in the history of the United States. More than 30 species. To get there, creating more habitat like the Carrizo Plain in the places where species need it will be key. For more information, or if you'd like to get involved in our work, contact us at California at tnc.org.